Hello and welcome to a new video on the Crypto2 YouTube channel. In this video I want to give you some tips and tricks how to work with different data types in Crypto2. We recently had some questions of people who had problems with specific topics and most of these topics were related to yeah, dealing with these different data types. And I structured this video into four parts. The first part will be working with texts and text is mostly used for classical ciphers. Then in the second part, I want to show you how to work with binary data. And binary data is used by modern ciphers and cryptographic hash functions. In the third part, I want to show you how to work with numbers. And this is used for basic math, RSA for instance, factorization, or for instance, generating prime numbers. And in the last part, I want to show you how to work with Booleans. And this is used, of course, for Boolean logic. As I already said, in our first part of this video, I want to show you how you can work with text in Crypto2. And as I already also said, text is mostly used for working with classical ciphers. And classical ciphers, yeah, as I said, work with text. And the text in Crypto2, of course, is the so-called string as data type. And yeah, text often only means for us in Crypto2 that we have, for instance, uppercase letters from A to Z and some classical ciphers also use digits. And that often means that you have to convert the text. So for instance, remove all the other uh, characters that are invalid and also to make the text uppercase. And for instance, some ciphers have a special ciphertext format in history. For instance, when you see original Enigma messages, they are, yeah, the text is divided into blocks of different letters, for instance, five letters, and then you have a space and so on. And with some ciphers, we have problems, for instance, with white spaces, when we have white spaces in the plain text. An example for this is the transposition cipher. When you have a white space in the transposition cipher, Crypto2 assumes that this white space is also part of the yeah, plain text, and it will also yeah, put the white space at another position. So it makes sense to remove the white spaces before we encrypt using a transposition cipher. Yeah, and what we will do now in Crypto2, for instance, is I will show you how you can change fonts that makes text yeah, easier to read. Then I want to show you how you can format the text, for instance, for the transposition cipher. An example, as I already said, is remove white spaces and so on. So let's go to Crypto2. I'm here now in Crypto2 and I want to show you how you can work with text. And to do so, I first create a new instance of the Workspace Manager by clicking on the New button here. If you do not know how to work with Crypto2 in general, you should have a look at my short introduction video about Crypto2 that I will also link in this video now. To show you how to work with texts, I first put a text input onto the Workspace. So I search for text and I drag and drop the text input onto the workspace. Then I make it a little bigger, that we have more space. And the next thing I want to do is I want to copy an original text into that text input. For that, I use a text from Wikipedia. And let's just copy the text here. Control C and Control V. Now we have some text that we can use for encryption, for instance, and also for formatting. The first thing I want to show you is that you can change now the font of the text. And you go here to the settings and then you choose manual settings. And with plain and cipher text, I prefer to have a monospaced font. That means that each of the letters uses the same size. So we need some more space. You see that now each letter is below each other letter. So each letter uses the same amount of size. And of course here you can change the font size so we can make it a little bigger and the font and so on. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make the text uppercase. For that I search for the string operations component and put the string operations component onto the workspace. And as you can see here, the text input gives us a string, a text that is type of string. 
And here we also have several string inputs and we have some number inputs and some string and one number output. And I connect now the text input with the string operations component. And here I want to say uppercase. And then, of course, we want to see the result. So we can search for the text output, put it onto the workspace and connect it. And an another tip I want to give you here is that you can mark, for instance, these two components here with holding down the control key. And then you can right click and you can say biggest width and you can say biggest height. And so these components are now, yeah, they have now the same width and height. And now I press play. And as you can see, the string operations here gets the yeah, plain text and it, yeah, changes it to uppercase. Now we could use this text, for instance, and give it to a Caesar cipher. But what I also want to do first is I want to remove the spaces. So I copy the string operations component, connect this here, and then I say replace, and then the string 2 input you can set here also, I make a space. And then I copy this text output here and connect it with the second string operation component and press play. And now we see we have no spaces. Now I want to remove also the line breaks. And to do so, I use a trick. I copy the component again, connect it here, and then I connect the string two input I need a text input for that. And the string 2 output. So copy these here. Not the output, the third string, the string 3 input, sorry. Then I remove in the string operations. Ah, it automatically replaced, uh, removed the inputs here. So when you connect a component here, or disconnect, you see these input string or um, text input here, and if you connect it again, it is yeah gone. So if we want to remove yeah the line breaks, so what I do is in the first text input I just make a line break, and I play press play. <laughs> okay, it. Okay, what did, what, I did, what did I do just? Um, I thought there may be a bug in the string operations component, so I copied a new one onto yeah, the um, workspace here. And what you can also do, you can here put in backslash um, expressions. So this is a return, and this is a line, line freed and a carriage return. And I replace these with a yeah, text input content that's empty, so that's removing and I thought that we have line breaks here but that is wrong <laughs> and you see here the, the text output yeah shows something that looks like a line break but these are the dashes here that makes a problem so we have to remove these also and yeah um, to test if the removing of the line breaks work I just make here enter and it doesn't work, so maybe we have to change this backslash n backslash r or just a line. Yeah, that works here. You can just, as I said, make enter here, then you have a line break, and then it removes the line breaks from your text here. You see here you have these, since we didn't do not remove the line breaks with this component, but then we remove the line breaks with this component, and this works. So yeah. That's what I wanted to do. And now we have the, the text here. And to speed this up a little, I remove the dash by myself when I see it here. So we have a dash with 
Studio 20 Century. Ah, here's the dash. Yes. And then we have a dash. Oh no, I just, I'm lazy. I stop this here. And then I copy this all here. To here. Remove this. And then I say here, dash. Now, the only thing that's annoying are the brackets. So what we also could do is we could use a regex. So we can say regex replace. And I want to have a regex where I give yeah, the symbols I don't want. I don't want the, the dash here. And I don't want the brackets. I don't want the comma. I don't want the full stop. And now we have an output text here, which only contains letters and we have the numbers here. And to remove the numbers, I just add also these to our regex. And now we have a formatted text here. And in that formatted text, we only have left the uppercase letters. And now we can use this text, for instance, to work with yeah, the transposition cipher. And when we want to work, for instance, with a substitution cipher, we could also use this. But if we want to see yeah, the spaces, I go to this component here, I delete it, since this removes our spaces. And now we have an uppercase text, yeah, only with spaces, no other symbols right now, because we removed all these. Now let's have a look how to work with binary data. As I already said, modern algorithms do not work with text directly, they work on binary data. And also cryptographic keys are binary data. And so when we want to work with modern yeah, ciphers in Crypto2 or with modern hash functions, for instance, we have to convert, for instance, uh, plain text to binary data. Or we have to convert keys. And yeah, text converted to binary data in Crypto2 then is for instance a byte array or a Crypt2 stream. And as I already said, we have to represent keys in other formats. For instance, a key we can represent with base64 or with hexadecimal or with binary. And these are also strings in Crypto2, which we have to convert to these data types. Thus, in the next part, we will convert text to binary data and vice versa. And of course, we want to enter cryptographic keys as hex values and binary values. I'm again back in Crypto2 and I want to show you how you can work with modern ciphers and hash functions using binary data. And for that, I first create a new workspace. And in that workspace, we also need a text input. Because even when you want to input binary data, by yourself, you can only use the text input. And then we need string decoders. And we connect the string decoder yeah, with the text input. And then you can enter your data here. Let's assume we want to enter yeah, the text as a bit string. So we enter something like this, eight characters, then some other eight characters, and another, and so on. And now we have our string decoder here. When you go to the settings, you can say the input format is not text, it is binary. And then we want to see the results. So we put here a text output and connect the binary output of the string decoder. The string decoder has a crypt to stream output and a byte array output and we connect the byte array with our text output. And then we press play. And what do we see here? First, the text here. So this, this here is a text, it's a string, goes out as a string containing zeros and ones into the string decoder here. And the string decoder then uses these, yeah, you can say bits that we specified here, 
and creates a byte array. So we have a byte array with yeah, three bytes. We have one, two, and three. And then these go out. And then, of course, the byte array here goes into the text output, but the text output then also visualizes the byte array as yeah, hexadecimal values. Now let's assume we want to visualize these also as yeah, a bit string. Then we need a string encoder. And we connect the string encoder here. And we copy the text output here. And connect it here. And then we say the presentation format we want to have is binary. Then we press play. And you see we get the same bit strings here as we put into the text input. But you can also change this, for instance, to other formats. Let's say we want to have octal. And you get octal numbers. You can say decimal. Then you get decimal numbers for each byte. And for instance, hexadecimal. This is also the default output of a byte array. Now what do you have to do when you want to work with modern ciphers? Let's assume we want to use the DES. Put the DES onto the workspace and we make some space here. Yeah. So let's have a look. The DES wants to have an input, which is an iCrypto stream. This is plain text or cipher text. Then it needs a key, which is a byte array, and it can get an initialization vector. And another interesting thing here in Crypto2, we have mandatory inputs and optional inputs. So these two inputs are always mandatory. You need something to end or decrypt, and you see here is a black yeah, uh, line around this connector. And here with the key, it's the same. When you want to encrypt or decrypt with DES, of course, you need a key. So this is also mandatory. It has a black line. And the initialization vector is only needed or is not needed when you have, for instance, electronic codebook mode. So it's optional. You have to connect this only for modes that need this. So the input is optional. And you see this because it has a gray line around. OK, now let's say this here is our plain text. And of course, our plain text is normal text. So we have something like hello world. This is a test of binary data in crypto 2. And the string decoder gives you a byte array output or a stream output. And what's the difference between a byte array and the stream? A byte array has a fixed length. For instance, keys can yeah are mostly in crypto 2 byte arrays. And the Text can have arbitrary length, so you can enter five yeah, letters or 5,000, depends on what you give to the DES, and therefore we need a stream because the stream has arbitrary length. So we connect the string decoder for our plain text, of course, with the text, and then we need a string encoder here. Connect the string encoder here, and then we have here text output. I use the trick here, you can just drag and drop into the workspace and then it makes suggestions based on what you did before or what it learned from templates that we put into Crypto2. And this here then is our cipher text. Now what do we else need? We need for instance a key. And the key in Crypto2 we have to give also as binary data, since the DES needs a binary key. And for that, I also use a text input. This is our key. And then I use a string decoder again. And I say the input format now is hexadecimal. And then I connect the byte array this time with the key input here. In the DES, it's encrypt and electronic codebook. That's OK. And now we have to give a key. But before I enter here something, I will yeah, press play. And then you see the DES makes an error because right now the key is too short. Now let's test it. A DES has a 64-bit key. Of course, we know that only 56 bits of this are actually used as a key. The others are parity bits. Nevertheless, you have to give yeah 64-bit byte array. 
So we say 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and you still see we have errors here. 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6, 0, 7, 0, 8. Does it say right now? Okay, we have an error here. No input data reporting. Ah, okay. <laughs> I forgot to change this string decoder here. We used it for binary, of course. This here is text. And what else I can show you here is that with the text, you can define which encoding we should use. We could use the, the ASCII encoding, Windows 1252, but by default we use the UTF-8 encoding. So this key here is long enough. My problem was that this text here the, was yeah, de uh, decoded using the binary format, but here was no binary string. So right now it should work. And yeah, as I said, we have here the text, it goes in. Then it is converted to an iCrypt2 stream by the string decoder. And in the end, we also get the text here. And of course, this is only garbage we cannot yeah, use. And if you, if you copy it right now, you get problems when you want to decrypt. For instance, you copy this here. Then you say here, uh, no, here, decrypt. And of course, this here is a text, UTF-8. Yeah. And as you see, it crashes because this text here, yeah, it's broken. It's, it's not a real UTF-8 text. It's, and so we cannot just copy this text here. So I make this, I revert this, encrypt again. And then I change this here to uh, hexadecimal. And now what you can do is you can copy this text here and then paste it here. Say this is here uh, hexadecimal, and of course we want to see here again UTF-8. So this is text UTF-8, and we change here to decrypt. And press play, and now the hexadecimal string or the string containing hexadecimal values is converted again to an iCrypt2 stream. The DS of course uses the same key here. The DES decrypts now because we set it to decrypt. And here the string encoder yeah, converts it again to text. So the two most important components when working with binary data in Crypto2 are the string decoder and the string encoder. And these are really powerful. And when you work with modern yeah, cryptographic algorithms, you need always string encoders and string decoders, and then you can define the format you want to use, and it converts to the correct format. Now let's have a look at the next part, and these are big integers. As I already said, asymmetric cryptographic algorithms and protocols, for instance RSA and Diffie-Hellman, work with big numbers or, as a data type, big integers. And I already made yeah, several videos on these, so you can have a look at the RSA video or the Diffie-Hellman video on this channel. And now I want to give you some tips and tricks when you work with these big numbers. And Crypto2 allows to enter big numbers with hundreds of digits. And also Crypto2 allows to calculate with big numbers. We will do this later on. And then Crypto2 contains components to generate big prime numbers. And also Crypto2 contains components to factorize big numbers, which we will also do. So let's have a look at these in Crypto2. I'm here now back in Crypto2 and I want to show you how you can work with big numbers. To do so, I, I also create a new workspace. Then I search here for number. And we have the number input. You can also change the font with the number input. I say also Korea new. I copy this since we yeah, need several number inputs. Then you have the number operation here, and the number operation has number input connectors here. So you can connect the first number input to this one here, the second number input to this one, 
And then we want to see the result here. And the result has to be visualized using a text output. The text output is able to yeah, get a big integer or an integer and to show it here as a number. And now you can enter here in the number input, for instance, a number. And the nice thing with the number input is it shows you two numbers here. So our number has three decimal digits and nine bits are needed to store these. And then you can enter a second number. And here with the number operations, you can select an operation. We have a lot of operations here, but I just keep it with plus. And then when you press play, of course, you get the sum of 545, and this is 545. And with all the components in Crypto 2, you can live change the numbers, oops, and then it changes these numbers here. But what you <laughs> may not have seen already is that you can also enter arithmetic expressions here. For instance, we can say plus 5000. And the error you get because when you start typing here and you have a plus here and it's evaluated all the time, the expression here, then we have 5005 plus and this is not a valid uh, yeah, expression. And when we enter then another number after that plus, then it again is an, a valid expression and then it works again. And to avoid these errors here, you can also stop this and then you can first enter your expression and then it should work without an error. So let's now enter here, for instance, 10,000 plus 10,000. This should be 20,000 plus one is 20,001. And then we get 20,001. Yeah, this, this is not a big thing, but the really cool thing here is you can also enter yeah, power expressions like this, two to the power of three, this is nine, plus one should be 10. Ah, I'm an idiot. <laughs> 2 to the power of 3, of course, is 8. <laughs> and 8 plus 1 is, of course, 9. I, I thought this here. Now it's 10. <laughs> okay, but the funny thing here also is you can enter, for instance, 3 to the power of 2000. And as you can see, we have a really fast big integer implementation. And yeah, you can even add an additional 0. And now we see we have not even hundreds of digits, we have thousands of digits. So we have a number here with 9,543 yeah, digits. This right now shows characters, but of course a character here is a digit. So this corresponds also to yeah, uh, digits. And also the number input tells you the number. We have here now 9,543 digits. And this is a number which needs about 31,700 bits. Yeah. Now let's have a look at some other expressions. For instance, we can mm, compute phi of x, maybe not to make such a big number, and then you get the phi function of x. And we have a lot of different other functions here. And also you could yeah, connect here. I need to copy the number input. Um, a number that is then used as modulo. So for instance, you say modulo 16, then this expression here is computed. It goes here into the component. Then the phi of that uh, number here of the result is computed and then it computes modulo 16. Now I want to show you two different other things that you can do in Crypto2 with numbers. And the, the first thing is you can generate prime numbers. And that is can be easily done by just searching here for the prime generator. And this has uh, different settings. For instance, I can say a prime number with at most n bits, a prime number with exactly n bits, a prime number less than or equal to n, and so on. And I want to have a prime number with exactly n bits, and I want to have 1024, or well, let's say 2048. This is a number that we could use, for instance, with RSA. And then we change this back, for instance, to plus 1. And 
then I connect the prime generator with this here. And then we have also a prime test. Put it onto the workspace. And the prime test has as output a boolean. We will later come to boolean, but right now I just want to show you the result of the prime test. So I copy this again. And then the prime test will test the number that goes into it and it will return a true or a false value, true if it's a prime number, false if it is not a prime number. We generate here a prime number and then when we test the prime number, if it is prime, this should be green because it's true. And of course, we add here a 1 to our prime number and then of course it's not a prime number anymore. And then this prime test here should be red since it's not a prime number. So let's press play. And as you can see here, generating a 2048-bit prime number yeah, takes some time. And here we have our prime number. And as I already said, the prime test of course tells us this is a prime number. And yeah, the prime test with the prime number plus one <laughs> of course says it's not a prime number. So with Crypto2, with the prime generator, you can generate really big primes. Of course, the bigger the prime, the more time it takes to generate that number. And the final thing I want to show you with Crypto2 is that you can yeah, factorize numbers. And I will remove these here. And uh, that was too much. This here, I want to make a multiplication. And then I want to generate two small prime numbers. For instance, with 128 bits, 128 bits. And I want to multiply these. For example, this could be P and Q of an RSA. You have here the P prime number, the Q prime number. You multiply it and then you get the N. Just press play. And now we have yeah, a 77 characters number or digit number. And now I want to factorize. I want to see if I can get the two prime numbers back here. And to do so, I make a new workspace. And then I search for the quadratic sieve component. And the quadratic sieve component is our component yeah, for factorizing numbers. I put in our small number here. text output. This here returns an array of big integers and this array will contain all the prime factors of our number. Like these. So these here are prime factors and this is our number input. It's okay. And I open the yeah, presentation of the quadratic sieve. So what will happen when I start the workspace? The number input will forward the number that we entered here to the quadratic sieve. The quadratic sieve will use four of my cores and use these to factorize the number. And in the end, we will see the prime factors here. So let's test it. I fast forwarded here now and I made a cut when I started the quadratic sieve and there's also a problem when I when I factorize using four cores of this machine then the recording software crashes. So but this the factorization here only took about yeah 52 seconds and it factorized our 255 bit number into our two original prime numbers. So factorization in Crypto2 can be done really fast using the quadratic sieve component, but of course when you increase the size of your prime numbers and these get bigger and bigger. This takes more and more time. And with prime numbers with 1024 bits or even bigger with 2048 bits that we usually use for RSA, of course, the quadratic sieve will not come to an end and it cannot factorize these numbers. And this was everything I wanted to show you with numbers in Crypto2. And now let's have a look at Booleans. Yeah, working with Booleans or Boolean logic. And what does this mean? A Boolean variable can store only two different values. So it can only store true, false or one and zero. And this then is used, for instance, for yeah, some logic. And 
This logic can be, we can use different functions for that. There are some Boolean operations that might be useful for us. For instance, the not function or the not a here. So if we have an input of a which is true, then we get false. If we have an input of a which is false, then we get a true. So it inverts the value of our Boolean variable, of our Boolean value. Then we have the end operations. And with the end operations, we have two Boolean variables, a and b. And then we have this table here, of course. A can be true or false, and B can be true or false. And A and B only result true, of course, and that's why we call it end, when A and B are true. Otherwise, it returns false, since one of the, of the values then is false, so the overall end result is also false. Then we have A or B, and we have, of course have A true or A false, and B true or B false. And we get as a result true when only one of these two yeah, input values is true. So we only get a false when both A and B are false here. And finally, I think that's really an important yeah, operation is the exclusive OR or XOR operation. And here we have also A true, A false, B true, B false. I use these XOR operations, for instance, for creating a one-time pad. And with the exclusive OR, the um, result is only true if only one of the two values is true. So only if A is true and B is false, we get true. Or if A is false and B is true, we get true. So we have the not A, A and B, A or B, and A, X or B. And of course, Crypto allows to enter such Booleans. And of course, Crypto 2 allows to work with these Booleans and to work with these operations. And of course, Booleans can be used with gates in Crypto2. That is something really interesting I want to show you. Yeah, and let's us have a look at Boolean values in Crypto2. I'm here now in Crypto2 for the fourth part of this video, and I want to show you how you can work with Booleans. And to do so, we once again create a new workspace. And then I search for Booleans. And I want to show you here the Boolean input. The Boolean input is a component, yeah, that can... <laughs> have true or false, a boolean. And boolean values are these red values here. And I think I want to have some more of these. So I just copy some. And here's another nice thing with Crypto2, you can mark all these and then you can say a line left. So these are all on the same line now. And then you can say spread vertical. Now the, yeah, the space between all the components is the same. And then I want to have the boolean binary operator here. And the Boolean binary operator gets two Booleans. And then we can say, for instance, here that we have an AND operation, an OR operation, then an AND, I didn't show you this, the NOR operation, then the XOR. And what is important here, the update needs both inputs. And I don't want to have this, I unmark this. That means that it's enough that only one of the values change that this operation gets executed. And I want to have the AND here. And you also see here, and I think that's nice, the original yeah, icons for the Boolean operations that you that are yeah, standard. I want to copy this here. And I want to have the OR operation. And I also use the same inputs and outputs here. And let's say this here is our A value. This here is our B value. This is OR. And then we want to yeah, visualize this. And for that, we have the Boolean output. Then another nice thing here, we can say a line on top. Copy this here to this here. Say here a line on top. And then I say here a line right, for instance. Now these components are perfectly aligned. And now we want to have, for instance, A is true. Then you see we have here a green yeah, light and not a red one. So green is true, red is false. And also for yeah, people having problems with red and green, we added here these lines that you see a difference between these two. And then press play. And what do we see right now? Maybe we can just rename this here and this here in OR. So A is true, B is false, A and B is therefore false since this here is false. Then we have the OR here, we have A or B. And this is true because, of course, 
one of the values here is true. But also put in the boolean not operator. So this is a not here. And I want to say a line bottom and a little, bit, little, little bit smaller, a line left. Then we can copy here. This is then C. Copy this once again here. A line right, a line top. Connect these. And then I say here spread vertical, spread vertical spread vertical now it looks nice so we have here a c value not and the output value here so this is not c and since c is right now false this should be true and as i said not so c not is yeah true and Another nice thing here is you can open the component, then you have the visualization with a button and you can click it here. We can do the same, for instance, here with these two. And you see that these values live change. So with Crypto2, you can create yeah, small logic programs or workspaces with Boolean operations and Boolean inputs and Boolean outputs. And some of the components yeah, give you a Boolean value. For instance, the comparator here. I have to stop it, of course. I remove all these. I don't think we need it anymore. So let's say we want to compare two numbers. So we have a number input. Say 100. Then I copy this again zoom in and we want to compare these two numbers for instance if they are equal and then we need a boolean output so and the comparator can uh, can be equal not equal smaller bigger smaller equal bigger equal and now let's test for equality when I press play here, we see 100, of course, equals 100. We get a green light. When I change it here, of course, it gets red. So now let's assume we also can make bigger here. And now, is 100 bigger than 100? No. Is 105 bigger than 100? Yes. And now let's assume we want to have or we want to create a maximum function. For that, we have the gate here. So we need two gates, one and two, and a text output. So the text output here will be our maximum of A and B. Then we have here A, for instance, and we have here B. And as you can see, the gate here, what, what does a gate do? The gate gets an input value and it just forwards it to an output value or, or it doesn't do this. So you, you see here we have a boolean. So we connect the boolean here and the boolean here can control if the gate is open or closed. And the first gate, of course, goes to this number here and the second number goes to this gate. And then we connect these two to the maximum. So we get a result from this or from this. And align this left. So this gate is set to true. So if A is bigger than B, then this gate is open. And this gate is set to false. And we will get yeah, uh, the, the bigger value of these two. So we have now 105. We change this to 107. We get 107 here. If I change it to 115, yeah, uh, no, 115, hmm. no, now it works. Ah, I know, so the problem with the gate is right now that a gate needs, yeah, um, both values. So. When you want to test this here, so I say I want to have here 125 
and I have to change this also to 115. Gates only update when they get two new values at the same time. I think we should make this a setting if it needs both inputs or not. Right now we have to enter both numbers again. So we have 117 and we have 105 and then 117 and 105. I think there might be a bug inside the gate, so we need to restart it. So the maximum function always works when we use it yeah, and restart it. So 150. But the live execution right now has a problem. That is based because, as I said, these two inputs here have to be updated. And these two inputs have also be updated. But if you only change one when you enter here a number, then of course the other does not update. Yeah. But the gate is really useful. And another example for a really nice usage of the gate is a loop in Crypto2 to show you here. And always we use this yeah, um, Boolean value here. So we have an initial value which is 1000. We have a stop value which is 2500. And here we have a loop that increments a value and we get here an output counter from 1000 to 2500. Just press play here. And then Crypto2 counts up to 2500. And if it's too slow for you, just close it, then it's faster. And then when you open it, you have 2500. This is based on the fact that the text output for displaying the value, yeah, it is like a break or like a it, it slows down the loop here. So, and when you close it, it doesn't show you the value, so it's faster. Yeah, and this is everything that I wanted to show you with gates and with Boolean values and with uh, different data types in Crypto2. If you have any questions, just write these below the video, then I will try to help you. And I hope that you liked that video. If yes, please give a thumbs up. If no, you know what to do, give a thumbs down. And if you did not yet subscribe to our channel, I would be really happy if you do so. It really helps us to grow the channel, to yeah, make Crypto2 more popular, to make the channel more popular. So thank you very much for that and see you in the next video.